Alright, haulers. Hello and welcome back to Train Sim World 2020. And do I have something special for you today? Today we're going to be jumping into the recently recently released, and I've already had a stroke, uh, the Canadian National Lines, that are, I believe it's the Oakville subdivision, something like that. And uh, so we're going to be jumping on here, seeing what we can do. We are doing the Maple Leaf motoring scenario. So we're going to be, I believe, hauling an auto car train. So those things over there, those yellow things, I'm pointing at my screen, you cannot see that. Alright, let's just jump in the locomotive. Now, I do want to say too, this is kind of special to me as well, because this is the first time that I've had an experience with a locomotive in this game. But I've actually had the ability to uh, be around and interact with in real life. And most of you guys will know I am from Maine, the state of Maine, US, which is right on the Canadian border, and this is a... Uh, a rail line or a railway that is actually active in my state. They actually have, I, I believe it's actually like St. Lawrence and Atlantic or something like that. They actually have a depot that I believe uh, Canadian uh, CN uses. My experience with actual locomotives on here is purely from rail fanning, purely seeing them. I've never actually gotten to sit on one, see, like, I've never been in a locomotive ever. And, uh, I believe, I did mention in the first episode too, uh, that I used to love like the Maine Eastern Railroad before they had to leave. I believe they actually owned a locomotive that they got from St. Lawrence and Atlantic, which I believe St. Lawrence and Atlantic actually got from uh, CN. I believe it was, I want to say 3573, something like that. Go ahead and look that up. You'll probably see that. That belonged to, uh, if, if I got it correct, you'll see it. I'll have to uh, look that up after just to be safe. If I did screw it up, I'll put the right number on screen here so you guys can see it. But without further ado, let's go ahead, let's jump in and get going. So, see if we can climb up here. Fatty's not good at climbing. Go ahead and we'll jump in here. Alright, we need to go ahead and insert the reverser handle, set it to forward, Turn on the generator field, set the uh, cutout valve to uh, freight. Alright, to start off, we're going to be heading over to a manufacturing plant to collect the first cut of auto rack cars. Alright. So, that's a new term that I've, he I've never heard, and that is cut. I've never heard it called a cut before. So we're going to go ahead and two horn, two blasts of the horn. I don't think we have to on this railway, but we're going to anyways. We're gonna throttle up the two. Be aware of any further switches that might need setting. I think we can see those on here, right? Where are we going? Are these the cars that we're gonna be picking up here? Oh, I don't know what cars we're gonna be picking up, so we'll have to see. So we're gonna take it nice and easy here. I don't wanna derail this thing right off the bat. It is kind of hard to see, but we should be okay. And uh, I was thinking here too, since we're going to be actually hooking up some cars, I was actually looking at some stuff, and uh, I'm, you know what, when we come up here too, I want to be safe, I'll probably slow down and stop the train, and get out and make sure that everything's hooked up, unless I can see otherwise, just because I am concerned, I don't want to derail it, or I'll do something just to make sure. At least if I do derail, it'll be hilarious. I don't know if you can in here. I'm assuming you can, because you could in the other games. But I was thinking, I actually went through and played like the first training scenarios just to get a feel for how this locomotive uh, works, because I don't believe it was in here before. And honestly, I really like it for what it is. It feels to me like the design of these locomotives is really, really poorly done, though. I want to know why they're engineered the way they are, especially the layout of all the controls. I feel like there's a lot of unused space here that could be put to better use and made it easier, uh, at least for operation's sake. So that's kind of interesting. But I was hooking up, I spent part of it going through the scenario of actually hooking up different cars and that sort of thing, and realized that this game would be the perfect candidate for a multiplayer. Like, think about this. You're either in the locomotive, or you're out on the ground communicating via walkie-talkie, and you're able to hold on to the rear of the train while you're switching, 
something like that. Or I know that one thing about this railway is that they're one of the leaders, I think, in using like RC, so remote control. I believe I saw that somewhere. And that would be awesome, the ability to actually be a dispatcher or something like that, set up in a switching yard and run one of these units via remote control, get a, a, a thing built and get them sent out. Like, I feel like there's so much they can do with this game now, especially now that they have so much variation in the different types of stuff they have. I think that would be very, very cool for freight. So, uh, just some thoughts if anyone happens to watch. Uh, and I will say this too, if you're someone who has actually worked with these locomotives and understands them better, please, please tell me why it, like, is built the way it is, because I am very interested in learning that. I am very, very curious to learn that, because it is very, very interesting. That is for sure. And, uh, I feel like, just personally, I, I, I feel like they could have done more to lay, like, some of the other, uh, European trains have everything kind of laid out flat. You've got a huge blind spot here, not that you re not that you really need it, I mean, let's be honest, but I feel like the visibility in these things is way worse than it should be. I mean, it's doable, don't get me wrong, that's why there's, it's not as bad most of the time. I'm actually going to check here. So, I think we're coming, I think these are highlighted because, oh, no, we need to go forward. We're going to switch that there. We're going to switch that there. I'm, I'm glad we can do it on here without having to actually get out. That is nice. We'll switch that there. Okay, so we're actually just going straight ahead. Whoops. Oh, no, no, no. I think we started rolling. Oh, I'm going to lose my ability to run these things. I'm going to get in so much trouble. I guess let's try and go again. My bad. <laughs> Alright, note to self. Do not stop on a hill and then not set the brakes. You will roll backwards. All right, and there we are. We are set. No, I did not want to set that to emergency. Oh, I set it to off. And a off. Perfect, because we're going to go down to the other end. Set this to cut out. That the MU2A valve do trail two or trail six or twenty-six. What is that? Six or twenty-six. Reverser to neutral. Move the reverser handle. Well, I mean the engineer seat. Alright, we're gonna turn the lights off. Alright, cool. So now we need to go down, squeeze our fatty ass through this door. Go climb aboard the other train. I'm gonna be lazy and we're just gonna go across. That is a very cool thing. I wish it was a little easier. Oh, wrong side. We'll learn how to do this eventually. All right, we can shut that behind us and take a seat. Awesome. Go ahead, we will insert the refer reverser handle. Set it to a forward. Set the brake cut out to freight. Set, uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Generator fuel on. Control fuel pump on. Where's that? Oh, those are already on. Cool. All right, so those are set. Set that to release. Throttle up to get moving. And we are going to the other yard. Why are we going to the other yard that fast? I have no idea. I feel like I should have checked the air brake hoses. But... It wants us to go already. Where's the, uh, gauge lights here? 
Why are the lights not on this end? Turn that on. Ditch lights? I think it turned on the lights down there. Hmm. <laughs> How do I do the lights in here? There we go. Cab light off. We don't need cab light. Alright, and there we go. We should be good. Just because we are on a downhill, I'm gonna let off of that, because we are gonna start going. Before we go too much further, I actually want to make sure that we're going the right way. Because, I don't know. So that's the highlighted route. We need to change uh, that guy. So that should be good. So we're gonna come down here. I'm assuming then we're gonna come down to this end and grab these cars that are down here, potentially. So I guess what we're doing is we're actually... Oop. We gotta get rolling. Please. My bad. I put the brake on too much. I am concerned of what exactly we're doing. I think what we're doing is we're, we're building a full auto rack train so that we're hauling a ton. But we'll have to see. Because I think right there you can see the cars on that side. I think we're going to be putting those together. So we're going to get down there, get this stuff lined up, and see what they want us to do. All right, so we've just connected to the rest of the cars. I'm gonna go ahead and set that that way. We're gonna try to put some power down. I'm gonna probably throw it into notch three because we do have a lot more weight on now than we did before. While I was coupling up, we did have another train go by with a uh, kind of a mixed consist on it. So we'll uh, see how we fare because it was heading the same way we're gonna be. As of right now, we're just hitting the, the highway of trains basically. So, uh, we're gonna be doing that. I do have a question. For anyone that actually drives trains, and that's not... That doesn't mean, oh, I drive a train in, simu in a simulator or something like that. I'm saying, like, if you've actually been behind the controls of a locomotive, what speed is... What, what are you trained to hit a car at? Like, when you're hitching up to a consist or another locomotive, what's the optimal speed you guys aim for when you hit them? Like, does it make an impact uh, on, like, if you're too slow, it doesn't couple right, or it doesn't couple at all, or if you're too fast, obviously you can damage the coupler, you can damage the locomotive, you can damage the cargo. So, you know, let me know what you guys do, because I'd be curious to find out. All What I've personally heard is two and a half to five miles an hour, kind of in between there, with being over five miles an hour kind of is a bad thing. So... I'm interested to see what the actual numbers look like. Obviously, I'm not a certified, you know, engineer or anything like that. So it's a learning opportunity. And uh, so drop that in the comments if you guys know that. But I do want to talk about a, a couple of things that have been interesting to me. Like I said, I would love to see multiplayer come into this at some point. I think that would be so, so cool. And I think they could knock it out of the park. One thing that I found that was kind of weird is the dovetail intro, like the, the cubes coming together on the white screen. As someone who basically lives in a cave in the dark, <laughs> like I'm constantly in the dark, that thing blinds me every time. Dovetail, please, like, I, I, I don't even mind watching it, like, when the game starts up. Make it so it's not a white background anymore. I keep getting blinded by the light, it's hilarious. But uh, on another note, actual stuff I would love to see. So obviously now they have Canadian National in here. Uh, I'm hoping that we'll see some more foreign stuff next time. Uh, obviously this is North American. Oh. Just wanted to make sure I did that on our way through. I totally didn't even see it, so last minute catch. But I would personally like to see some foreign stuff at some point. Uh, like, obviously, we've now got, what, Germany, we've got uh, Canada, the U.S., and inside the U.S., you've got at least two different sides, so two different coasts. Uh, what else do we have here? 
Oh, we do have Amtrak here. We have... Oh, we also have the UK and a, a few things from the UK. Other than that, I don't really know, but it would be cool to see... Personally, you know what I want to see next is Australia. I don't think I, I... I Actually, I think they just released a Australian uh, set or DLC in the other game, the original train sim. Personally, I don't play that anymore. But I would love to see Australia come in, and uh, that's because they have like a huge mining industry down there. So they have a lot of locomotives that we actually export here in the U.S. that go down there. I would love to see that. And in terms of locomotives, there is one in particular that caught my fancy a little while ago that I really want to see. And I believe it's General Electric. They made like a hybrid locomotive. I don't remember the exact model. I'll have to look it up. But it's a... I think it's a hybrid, and it actually has lights underneath it that flash. I would really love to see more futuristic style trains that are, are aimed towards not only being, you know, efficient, but also looking good. It'd be just nice. It's, it's time to mix it up. All of our locomotives and stuff are like way, way old, and I don't want to see them become super expensive. Obviously, that doesn't make any sense for a company to, you know, keep just pour a ton of money into something that's gonna get destroyed over time. But it would be nice to see some more clean locomotives, some more well put together ones, and some new styles. I mean, it's been very obvious, I mean, you've, you've seen a lot of car manufacturers over the last few years really focus on kind of the futuristic look. I don't think I've seen much at all for new locomotives. I mean, the same, the last 10 years have been almost the same thing the whole time. Because they bought so many of them, they can just like swap and, and share parts it's no no issue I mean and these things are beasts they run forever but it would be nice to see some new stuff come out in terms of like obviously that's not I'm not asking train sim world to come out with that that wouldn't make any sense I'd like to see companies like General Electric put a little more priority into it obviously our rail infrastructure here in the US is struggling so I don't know how that would look in terms of you know putting a lot of money into R&D if they would ever make that money back. I don't know. But I think it would be very cool to see some new stuff come in. And uh, I hope if they do come out with some new locomotives, that they take a little more time and, and effort into figuring out what is broken with the current ones and what could be made more efficient. The one thing that surprises me, like obviously I'm not a, an actual engineer, so I've never had this experience in real life, so I don't know if it compares. But sitting here right now, I feel like there's so much that could be done to this locomotive to not only make it functional in, in a much easier way, but to bring it up to kind of the standards of today and make it look good at the same time. This interior, like, it's very much an industry interior. Like, this is, you know, I think I've only ever seen those panels. I think that's probably storage of some kind and then maybe access to the light boxes. I don't know. But this is what they have on school buses. Uh, some of the older school buses. I don't know about new new school buses, but I remember seeing things like that where you open that and it's just a door But I would like to see some new stylings, you know this right here Obviously, you've got a giant blind spot, so you can't really see it would be cool if maybe you know like uh, I Used to be I used to work in a warehouse and the way that we actually drove our forklifts. I was a forklift driver uh, was there we were actually stand-up drivers so what you would do is you would actually stand up on the forklift and you would stand sideways your right side would be on the f the side facing where the forks are and your left side would be facing the other direction so if you are hauling something you are facing left but if you were trying to pick something up or move it and you were looking at the pallet it would be on your right side and all of your controls were kind of laid out beside you it was really really nice i actually prefer stand-up forklifts now to your sit-down variant i really do and uh, it would be cool if they would make you know obviously it's not good on your neck at all either i will say that but for the amount that you uh you look backwards Very quiet, no traffic today. But for the amount that you look backwards, you would think they would at least add in like some kind of swivel seat right here. 
Oh, do we have company coming the other way? It looks like we just might. I really need to get up to speed. I'm going to turn the bell off. Yeah, it looks like we got company coming. But yeah, you would you would think they would make it so that it would be easier to kind of run everything. It looks like that locomotive has stopped, actually. Interesting. Does it know something we don't? Are we about to get in trouble? Also, why are we struggling? Are we on a we're on a grade? That's why. It's like I'm putting the power down. Why are we not going anywhere? Oh, you know what? Actually, one very cool thing that I would love to see is the Lorem Rail Grinders. I would love to see that. Or, like, maintenance of waste stuff. Obviously, that's a giant ask. Like, the amount of effort that's going to take to get that stuff in the game. But, like, how cool would it be to, like, spend a night just going through and, and grinding it like you would... Well, that sounds bad. I'm talking, like, grinding rails, not certain other activities that involve grinding. And I think that would be awesome, personally. I'm just a nerd for trains, so I think normally boring shit is more fun. Yeah, this guy stopped. Looks like he's got grain on. I hope he's not waiting for us. He probably is. Sorry, dude. Yeah, it looks like he's got grain on. One thing that I thought was funny was when I first started off, all of the cars were actually CSX cars. So I don't know if those are actually also in the Canadian National one or if it was a glitch of some kind. But I think, I mean, most train companies share in a lot of the stuff they do. Oh, I think he's moving now. Yeah, I think he's already moving. But what I'm going to do, I guess, now is I'm just going to focus on getting us where we need to go. And then we will come back as soon as we get closer to the end. That's not good. This is very not good. Did not realize we were getting changed over there. You're not supposed to do like more than 15 through those. That was not good. That was very, very close. So hopefully we can get slowed down here and get back to going normal. checked ahead hoping that I wouldn't have any issues like that but I still did because it seems that it's changed up so I'm gonna have to take a look ahead here and see what's ahead of us what's coming up because looks like we're gonna probably be heading into this yard so we'll see all right so yeah we are heading into the yard here man these like shifting a lot we keep getting yanked here in the back I'm not sure where we're going here so I'm not sure if I need to switch the line at all 
probably check real quick just to be safe. We're all switched here. We're coming down. And we're parking right here. So I guess we're okay. So I guess right now it's just that we're going to pull in, park, wait for everything to get repaired, and then go from there. So overall, knock on wood, it went pretty well for our first drive on the new line. I say drive, you know, first run, I guess, whatever you want to call it. Still have some improvements to do I, on, on making sure I'm keeping up with things because I missed that, that junction, but overall it's been okay. So room for improvement as always, but for right now we are in good shape. So we're going to look at coming to a slow here. While we're slowing, I do quickly want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, or in this case, Patreon supporter. WX Squint has been supporting uh, my channel and what I do further than just watching the content and doing so in a way that really makes an, a difference for me. And uh, huge thank you to, to her. And if you're interested in that at all, you can find my Patreon in the description below. There is a link to that. Down there, you can also find me on social media. I would love to stream this. I stream over at twitch.tv slash lawnhollergmg. And I'm probably going to spend quite a bit of time streaming some of this here pretty soon. We always have a convoy on Saturday nights with a bunch of really cool guys. I'm not going to name drop them because I don't want I don't want to be that guy that... I don't want to sound like I'm using other people to get stuff because I'm not. I want to build my own thing. So I'm not going to name drop them. But a bunch of really great guys had a really good time last time. And uh, I'm the leader of that, so you get to see the, the shit show that is me running a convoy, <laughs> if you're interested in that sort of thing. And uh, so definitely come and check that out, and I want to do this, like I said, too, on stream. And uh, you can find all that stuff in the description. You, also, you can also find a link to my Discord as well. And if you'd like, you can join that, hang out with me, hang out with the crew, that sort of thing. I'm in there quite frequently. It is pretty active for what it is. It's a very tiny Discord, obviously, but... There are people in there that are always willing to have a conversation and help you out if you're working on this game or anything like that. And uh, it looks like we're coming up here pretty quick to a slow, so we're going to look at making sure that we watch our speed. I'm not going to hit the brakes for quite a bit. We're only doing 12, so I'm probably going to aim to hit the brakes. Ooh, probably around 50, so we're coming up here. We'll watch the number on our right side, not something you normally get to do in real life. Whoops, I just want to go initial. The one thing about running locomotives that surprised me is I had this instinct to always put the brakes on way harder than I need to, and that is because, in my mind, the only thing that's braking is the, the locomotive itself. That's not the case. The, uh, the cars are as well. We're going to go ahead and set this to neutral. We're going to set the handle to off, if I can find it. Handle off. And we'll be stabled here until the disruption associated with the maintenance clears. So we can probably pull that out for right now and chill for just a second. I think we're done. Are we, we're good. There we go. Time taken, 59.42. It's meant to be a one hour uh, thing. So look at that. We even got the gold medal. So that is two gold medals in a row. Awesome. That is, that is just awesome. But yeah, thank you guys for joining me on this little trip. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Peace.